I'm going to be reading from my novel, The Booster. Uh, it's about a compulsive shoplifter. Through the window, she is surprised to see that La Petite Coquette is full in the middle of the day. A man in for a look-see, a woman about the same age as Jillian, looking desperate, as if she too is seeking sanctuary in lingerie. And another woman, overloaded with shopping bags, crammed the undersized, lavender-scented shop. It looks like Christmas inside, shimmery, hopeful, and filled with goodies. She's so eager to go in that she nearly forgets her mantra. She inhales a deep breath to compose herself. It is mine. It is mine. It is mine. La Petite Coquette sells primarily expensive underthings, but occasionally items like soft sweaters, airy drawstring pants, and silky scarves make their way onto the racks. Last year, she bought a wildly expensive Deborah Marquette leopard bra and matching low-rise hipsters, so the way she sees it, she's been a good and loyal customer of the store. She wanders by a row of corsets and past the undershirts and panties toward the back by the bras. Her heart picks up the pace, the pulsing palpable below her blouse. One bra in particular catches her eye. Tiny eyelet straps, piercingly white demi cups. Her fingers trace the edges, not perfect under a t-shirt, too bumpy, but impeccable under a jacket clean, the tiniest scallop edge framing the decolletage, lovely, 34B, close enough. Double seamed, flawless, custom made closure, heartbreaking. She glides it off the satin hanger and lets it drop to the counter. It must weigh less than an ounce. Her breath pounds out in heaves, her teeth chatter, droplets of sweat trickle down her side, sending out a rank perfume. Her nipples harden. She swallows a mouthful of saliva, the gulp of it echoing in her head, a quick slide off with a nimble hand, and poof, it is gone, engulfed by a cavernous pocketbook. On a normal day, this trinket would be enough. She would go home and build a new world around this tiny but poignant acquisition. But today, there's a larger hole to satisfy. She meanders around to another spot and smiles at the young sales girl. Hello, hello, how are you? Fine, fine. Jillian lowers her eyes using the thinnest drape of eyelid to protect her from the world. It occurs to her for a moment to run, to pull out the flawless 34B white eyelid demi cup and hand it to the young sales girl and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't want to take this to you, for, from you. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to take it from you. It occurs to her to run away from La Petite Coquette with nothing crammed in her purse or her pocket and to be whole once again, innocent once again, a regular person once again. But she can't. She can't because she is not, and she has not been for as long as she can remember, free or clean or whole or a beautiful, or a regular person. Three scarves drape over a counter, one red, one teal, and one burnt orange. The flossy surface of the fine material tickles her fingertips. These tiny filaments, hundreds and thousands of them to the inch, rise up from the weave and flirt with all who approach. She smooths her moist palm lightly along the surface, then brings her hand up to her face to smell the musky fragrance. She imagines it folded in her drawer or resting against her skin tonight. The desperate longing seeps from her stomach into her bloodstream, fueling her bravado. With a sharp exhale and a nimble wave and scoop, it is home. The hole is filling up, but empties itself almost as quickly Another smooth walk around, she is panting invisibly, nearly vomiting. Another smile and nod to the pretty sales girl, and two pairs of stockings, size unknown, are added to the goodie bag. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Thanks, she gestures and adds a blasé smile. She escapes, nearly falls out the front door and into the street. Out of breath, sour sweat pouring down her wrists, 
she stumbles home to throw up and change. <laughs>